was warned about the height of the stage, uh, which is kind of ironic. I'm set up five and see from vertigo, so if I topple off, uh, it's going to be a worry. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Liverpool, uh, and now I live in St. Helens. Don't boo, it doesn't sound good. Yeah. Uh, it was recently described uh, as a shithole. Um, and like the, the, the hills have got eyes, uh, which I think is kind of a nice description of it really. We've, we've all been comparing our, our own shitholes. That's not my description of the... Uh, that doesn't sound right. That's, 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 that's really my, uh, yeah, so we move quickly on. <laughs> I don't write this shit, really. That was thing. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was my description of St. Helens. That was uh, a, a Big Brother uh, contestant, uh, Gabby Allen. She also went on to say it had the highest incest rate in the country. You know, you've got to be proud of something. Uh, my civic pride in St. Helens is the rugby team. Sorry, especially rugby. <laughs> I'll go there. There it is, a boo. I'll, I'll edit that out. That sounds good. <laughs> the first boo of the night, sorry. Uh, so it, it is, the, it's the sporting team and uh, Johnny Vegas, really. Uh, we also, I think in the Daily Mail, I don't normally believe anything that's said in the Daily Mail, but we're in the top 10 for depression in the country as well, so it just gets better and better, really. So I wonder why I can't sell my house in St. Helens, really. So we've also got the biggest spice problem in the country. I think that the problem with spice in St. Helens is not enough of it to go round to forget the fact that we live in St. Helens, really. So, so yeah, so, I like it really, so I've been there for 14 years, Christ. Uh, you know, the old joke about what, what you, you know, you get, get less for sort of murder, really, so. Um, I'm new to comedy, so this shambling sort of act before you, this is a midlife crisis. I know what you're thinking, God, it, uh, you know, it looks quite young, it's the light, it's great lighting in here, really, so. Um, I don't know what, what sort of vibe to go for, really. I thought I'd come on and give it the yo motherfuckers book. I don't look like a young motherfucker type of comedian. <laughs> I look like Stephen Merchant has let himself go and he's got Lambretta vouchers for Christmas. Really. So that is the vibe that I give off, really. So yeah, it's kind of a bit of a, bit of a struggle, really. So um, yeah, I'm not really one for watching much television. I was a bit disappointed to find out that uh, Killer Women with Piers Morgan wasn't an abbreviation of Killer Women with Piers Morgan left in a room with anthrax, knives and guns really. So, um, I don't know if you saw his recent interview with uh, Donald Trump. Journalism that wasn't. And it wasn't Frost Nixon of our generation, it was more Brokeback Mountain meets Dumber and Dumber really. So, it was so demeaning, I half expected Piers Morgan to come out of a cake and start singing Happy birthday, Mr. President. Glad you got the uh, Marilyn Monroe joke there. Really. My material is not sort of topical, really. I'm not that old as well. I remember Marilyn Monroe first time around, really. So, yeah, uh, there's three things I don't like about Piers Morgan. Uh, the first one, maybe the sort of doctored photographs, maybe the hacking of the dead girl's phone. I think the main thing I don't like about him is the fact that he introduced uh, Heather Mills to Paul McCartney. When he's from Liverpool, that still rankles, really. And I'm sure it rankles with Paul McCartney's accountants because he's been fleeced out of half his uh, estates. But he's down, to his la he's down to his last billion, I suppose, really, so never mind. Um, I don't really like Christmas shopping. Uh, I'm a typical bloke in that regard, really. I you know, November is a bit too early for all the whole Christmas shopping lark. I was in Liverpool one last year, and I was struggling to, uh, to think of what presents to buy for Christmas. Uh, and I was just walking around, you know the, sort of the, the bit where all the sort of gifts are, and uh, I was just standing there. Next minute I in the broadest Scouse accent, this guy shouting, I don't get any time for Christmas! <laughs> and then in an even broader Scouse accent I heard, get her a fucking candle, birds love candles. So, uh, apologies to the women in the audience. So, I think this is a public service announcement for blokes who are struggling for uh, some presents, and for women who are thinking, why do I always get bloody candles every year, really? So you're probably in earshot of that as well. As I said, I'm not really one for shopping. My attitude to shopping is a bit like my attitude to sex. I just like to get in, get out, and put my clothes back on, really. It's probably why I'm banned from Aldi, really. I get the super easy and it's done, really. So, so yes, um, I don't also like about shopping the whole sort of uh, feedback culture. I was in the, the Tesco's in St. Uh, sorry, the, the Boots in St. Helens the other week. I was only buying a pack of mints, and the girl said, can you just have your opinion of the, the transaction? So, I thought, fair enough. I also don't like the over-familiarity in shops as well. Uh, again, I was in sort of uh, the same sort of uh, boots, you're thinking, he's in boots quite a lot, what is, has he got a problem? No, no problems I'm going to sort out myself with, uh, really. Um, I just like collecting this sort of advantage points, really. So, I'm having this transaction with the, with the girl, 
That sounds a bit rude again. Um, uh, so I'm having this, this transaction. I was buying tea tree shower gel. And I know what you're thinking. He's from St. Helens. He looks more of a Lynx Africa type of guy, really. But just because I'm from a shithole, I do like the finer things in life every now and again, really. So, so I'm buying this sort of uh, tea tree shower gel. And the girl is trying to build up a bit of a rapport. And she goes to me, oh, it's lovely stuff, that. But you have to be very careful. You don't get it on your bits because it makes them go all tingly. So I'm standing there thinking, Christ, this girl has just thrust her tingly bits in my face. Not literally, of course, uh, uh, me too and all that. So, so she's thrust her tingly bits in my face and I'm trying to get out of this sort of embarrassing situation. So she goes, can I have your opinion? And I said, well, I'd like to know less about your tingly bits. And obviously I didn't win the vouchers and I now shop at uh, Super Drug Rally. So I'm going to finish with a football joke. There'll be more booing, I think. Uh, obviously when I announced the football team that I support. My team, Q Boos, at Everton. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Everton fans in there. Sure. I'll, I'll rewind. No boos then. Uh, my team, Everton, signed the Brazilian footballer Bernard. Manchester United signed the Brazilian footballer Fred. They don't sound like a Brazilian name to me. <laughs> they sound like uh, racist 70s comedians or paedophile weather presenters. Sorry for any Bernards and Freds in the audience. <laughs> Sweeping generalisation, I know. Um, so yeah, that, that's what they sound like. In 2014, the uh, World Cup was in Brazil, you could download an app where you could sort of generate your own Brazil football name. And I was going to buy one of those classic sort of Pele sort of uh, shirts. I thought, you know, I could do it, you know, I'd like to have a sort of a very exotic sort of name on the back of a shirt. So I thought to myself, what, what name should I go for? Uh, so I put my name in and um, I thought, let's kind of throw up something like Clarketinho, Paulinho, no. My Brazil football name, believe it or not, Q, uh, drum roll, is Clito. <laughs> and there is the evidence to support that, really. So that is not a common contrivance. So my Brazilian football name is Clito. Uh, it's a name which rolls off the tongue. It may do if I get, <laughs> it may do if I get home in time and Graham Norm's not on. Um, I didn't get that football shirt because I thought, you know, if I had that shirt and I put it in the wardrobe, I'd have to, my girlfriend would have to help me locate it really. So, thank you very much. You've been a great audience. I'll see you next time.